Today we're on Lake Kariba, dubbed the aquatic jewel of Africa. This man-made lake lies along the great Zambezi River and forms part of Zimbabwe's northwestern border with Zambia and as the crow flies is 400 kilometers from Victoria Falls. The Zambezi has its source in northern Zambia and flows for more than 2,000 kilometers before draining into the Indian Ocean. Construction of the Kariba Dam Wall began in 1956 and was completed around 1960. It's 128 meters high. Building of the dam wall had its own challenges, particularly in 1958 when mighty floods inundated the Zambezi when the project was almost complete. The floods swept away access bridges and a significant part of the dam wall. For the Tonga people, who had been against the construction of the dam from the beginning, this was a sign that the river god Nyami Nyami was angry at what appeared to be the arbitrary harnessing of his waters. Subsequent deaths of dozens of people during the construction of the dam were also attributed to Nyami Nyami. Wow, this is what we call sheer craftsmanship. Wow. What is this symbolized at the top here? That's the age. The Tonga people, the very people who are staying here, all of this land, mm -hmm. they believed along the Zambezi River, before the dam was built, there was this, which they call the Nyamiami historical walking stick. Oh, I see. Now they had some details. They say the head was part of a snake. Mm -hmm. as you can see. Yes. And the tail was part of a fish. We have a head here which represents the snake. And also we have the fish here. It represents the staple food for the Tonga people. As mm -hmm. you know long back people were not uh, like the Tonga people. They were not, they were not willing to plow. Okay. But all they wanted was to go for fishing along the Zambezi River. So in other words, this is what they lived on? Yes, so they took fish as their staple food, as you can see. Right, and these would be the Tonga people? These are the Tonga people now. In spite of the foregoing, Kariba to date remains the second largest man-made lake in the world. It covers an area of more than 5,000 square kilometers. It is 280 kilometers long and at its widest point has a breadth of 30 kilometers. The average depth of the lake is 18 meters. At full capacity, it stores 184,000 million cubic meters of water, largely impounded for the generation of hydroelectric power. With its life-giving waters, the lake supports a vibrant ecology that includes people, animals, and the surrounding bush. Lake Kariba is a holiday maker's water paradise, offering leisurely boat cruises, fishing, and game viewing from the lake and off the lake. One can leisurely drift along watching the vast expanse of fresh water go by, stop for some refreshments, and cap it all by enjoying one of the most beautiful African sunsets. Kariba is also a lively playground for those who like to keep their adrenaline pumping. The options for such are many, from high-speed boating, water skiing, to high-speed sailing. Another sport for which Kariba is famous is tiger fishing, with the annual tiger fishing competition drawing several international teams and contestants. From being home to the giant tigerfish, Lake Kariba is also home to the tiny Capenta fish, introduced to its waters in the 1960s. These little fish provide an important source of protein for Zimbabweans, particularly the poor, spawning a highly successful Capenta fishing industry. Each evening, these strange craft, nicknamed Capenta rigs, can be seen setting out onto the lake to hold tons of Capenta fish. Abundant light is an essential part of the Capenta fishing process. The light is designed to attract the fish into a big round net. A 
It usually takes about nine hours to catch around a hundred kilograms of Capenta. Well, basically we lower the net. We then switch on a variety of lights. The 400 watt Merc vapors at the top and we put four lights underwater, actually in the water. We wait for an hour to two hours for the fish to come around and then we switch off the lights in a sequence leaving just one light, the light on above the net. After maybe five or ten minutes we then do what we call a pull where we lift the net hydraulically switching on and off the light um, and the fish goes into the net. But the lights are there to attract the food for the carpenter and then the carpenter follow that. And that's basically it. Just a few meters from the lake are drying racks where the capenta are dried. The fish are salted with coarse salt, which acts as a preservative, and then are put out to dry. To smooth out the drying process, the capenta are periodically turned. Once dried, they are ferried to the various local, regional and international markets.